Hello, and thank you for joining me on another one of my lifestyle series videos. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dimitri, and I'm an American expat living in the Philippines. Here, I'm going to share with you how my life is going living in Metro Manila. If you find this video entertaining, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. And now, sit back, relax, and enjoy as I take in a journey of my daily life as a time-lapse traveler. Hello, and thank you for joining me for a very special presentation I've been putting together as a multi-part series to show you some of the places to eat and shop in the famous Bonifacio High Street here in Bonifacio Global City, which is the financial hub of Metro Manila. This is just a quick general overview of this section of High Street, with more detailed videos to follow. I fell in love with this neighborhood as soon as I saw it during my first visit to the Philippines four years ago when Chris and I had our church wedding down in Tagaytay. The Bonifacio High Street Mall is separated into different sections with each one having its own unique theme. We start at around 7th Avenue, because why not? Some of the spots you are going to see here I'm personally familiar with, but most I haven't actually visited before. There are some that Chris and I enjoyed more than others, and generally, the more time I spend in a location during this tour, the better I can rate my personal experience. The first point of interest we're passing is the high street, with emphasis on eat. Get it? Filipinos are all about those puns. I made a video here before, which I invite you to check out. This is definitely a must-see centerpiece spectacle which was first brought here in October of 2020, as a way to prop up some of the local businesses hit by the pandemic as indoor dining is now severely limited, and this venue lets people eat out without much fear of getting sick. Originally, this was only meant to last a short while, but due to its popularity, and the public demand, it seems like it's here to stay, and I'm all for it. These are small booth vendor versions of some of the restaurants that have an actual brick and mortar location in the neighborhood, some of which you will see later on in this video series. Belonging to an actual sit-down restaurant here in BGC, don't expect to get anything close to resembling street vendor prices however, but you can expect high quality food items just as you would at any of the corresponding restaurant locations. These additional pop-up shops just outside of the high street booths were here for only a few months between November and rolled down by about middle of January and was a great place to buy all manner of plants for your home or seeds for your garden. The large variety is all but a guarantee that you will be able to find whatever you may be looking for to decorate your space with some greenery or pick out some new seeds to plant. Now that the sales booths aren't around, you'll often find kids rolling around on their kick scooters or skates. There are also more and more bicycles and electric scooter rental options that are opening up which is great to see. One thing is for sure though, there is always something to see here in this wide open plaza with constantly updated structures decorating this open air mall. From here out, each time I name a place of business, Look out for a caption with the rating and possibly other quick info that you should be aware of for some better context. Crossing 5th Avenue, just one block away from the Philippine Stock Exchange building, we find the Juan Bonifacio High Street Mall. On the weekends, this part of 5th Avenue is closed off to traffic and even more food vendors come out here, like the popular dim sum restaurant Din Tai Fung or DTF as it's commonly known. Now we will go into the indoor shopping mall area to see what kind of restaurants and shops can be found there. The first space that I'm always drawn to when I'm down here is the Vietnamese Van Mi kitchen. I love the lemongrass chicken sandwich, it always has the spot, and at a great price. Zach's burgers are also pretty good and well worth a try. Hawker Chan is known for being the cheapest restaurant chain in the world that's rated with a Michelin star rating, and that quality reputation is something that they definitely want to hold on to. Further down, we see Pepper Lunch, which is one of my personal favorite chain restaurants. The Korean Alley street food corner has lots of treats that you are likely to find on the streets of Seoul. So far, I've only tried the excellent orange lemonade from the first stand we just passed. There is certainly no shortage of choices in this underground food court. Now moving up to the ground level of this mall, we see an assortment of boutique shops that can be found in most typical malls, whether you are in an upscale neighborhood such as the Bonifacio Global City, and it wouldn't be much out of place to see these stores in Midtown Manhattan in New York City. If you go straight up to the second level, however, you will find an even more awesome assortment of places to eat. But here, they are a bit more upscale than the food court down below. 
The first place we see is the Nikkei Japanese Bar and Restaurant. One of the things that makes this place special is the view that you get from the balcony while you're enjoying your sake and sushi. And this connects us to the Chateau Old World restaurant, which serves French, Italian and other European dishes. Back inside the mall on the second level, there is a mix of boutique stores and of course more restaurants such as Soban, the Korean barbecue restaurant, which has great value meal options that are sure to satisfy even the biggest appetites, since the meats will keep coming. Ramen Nagi is one of the most popular chains for a great ramen meal that is famous for its quality. Basil is a Thai restaurant with delicious curry dishes that always draws me in. Also a great place for large family sized platters. The Yayoi Japanese restaurant is a chain that can be found in hundreds of locations around the world. But if you want a grandmother's kitchen-like setting, then I strongly recommend Mary Grace. Besides sweet pastries, you'll have a great choice of modern Filipino favorite savory dishes with an old world flair in the most inviting setting you'll see anywhere that gives you a really homely feeling. Ramilo Cafe has a very unique way to persuade customers not to sit next to each other and abide by social distancing laws by taking up every other seat with a cardboard cutout of famous figures who helped shape the modern history of the Philippines. The founder, Carlos Romilo, was a famous diplomat, statesman, soldier, journalist and author. And now you can enjoy a meal with his image sharing your table or a number of other historic figures including US presidents such as John F. Kennedy or FDR. The Amici is one of the few places you can get some Italian food and you can follow that up with Italian cakes and ice cream next door in Caramia. More sweet treats are on the corner at 24. I suggest you try those cookies, which we already saw while passing through High Street Outdoor Food Market. Staying with the Mediterranean theme, we have the Café Mediterranean, a Greek restaurant with a particularly friendly host who left me with a smile on my face. I can't wait to try the food here sometime. Next we have the Daily Cut, which serves some great healthy food options, which is not all that common when eating out. I love it when I can choose from a list of ingredients. As they say, it's real food for real people. Ah uh, yes, Single Origin, one of my top favorite chain restaurants for some great food and maybe a nice drink while I'm at it. Each visit to one of these locations is always reliably memorable. I guess I have a soft spot for this rustic setting and the quality of what's on the menu is always excellent. Next we're entering Kashmir, which is one of the very few Indian restaurants around and is the only one you will see in this video. This cuisine has been one of my favorite comfort foods for many years since I visited India about 12 years ago, but I haven't been to this one yet. That's only because I haven't known about it though, so definitely going to change that. I've actually made plans to have dinner here with Chris right after scheduling this video you're watching now to be posted, kind of as a celebration of completing it. Let's see if we're going to enjoy it as much as I think we will. The only question is, are we dining in or are we eating out? Here you can see some of the miniature model of Bonifacio Global City and some of the real estate properties built by the Ayala Corporation. It's one of the most influential companies here in the Philippines and looking at what they have built here, you can clearly see why. Ayala Land is one of the biggest developers in the country and BGC is their crowning jewel. Once you do get an apartment here, the Dimension Furniture Store is where you can buy all you need to furnish your home. The Playbook Store has all the high-end consumer tech you are likely to need. I may have to come back here sometime myself to look into some accessories. If you're looking for some fancy workout equipment, then the Life Fitness is the place for you. I mean, where else are you going to find such a beautiful wooden treadmill or a high-tech stationary bike next to another one made out of an oak tree? All of that so far has only barely scratched the surface of what you can find inside the one Bonifacio High Street Mall. If you would like a more in-depth review of any of these locations, then please leave a request for that in the comment section and I will be happy to oblige. That will actually give me an excuse to experience it for myself and I will have you to thank for that. This is the Alab Ang Puso or Fire in the Heart by sculptor Daniel De La Cruz. It's a tribute to the Filipino soldier with his weapon at his side, reading a letter from his family. Behind him is a steel panel with the shining words of Lupang Hinirang, meaning determined land. On the steps are words that mean love, sacrifice, freedom, peace and hope in Tagalog and in some other Philippine languages. 
Now crossing 3rd Avenue and approaching the end of the line for High Street. Here is where you will find the Mind Museum, which is the best place to take your kids of all ages. Since there are over 250 exhibits, they will enjoy it no matter how old they are, as long as they have an inquisitive mind to soak it all in. Sadly though, it's closed due to the pandemic. Passing by Jollibee, which is the only fast food restaurant chain to beat McDonald's in the Philippines, and taking a peek inside Science in the Park, which is a children's playground for the kids who don't mind being tricked into learning as they play. Sadly, it too has been closed for almost a year now due to the COVID outbreak, so it's now starting to develop that abandoned look. Here you can have an actual bird's eye view, or see the world through the eyes of an insect. These giant mushrooms are actually unique music instruments, so that's pretty cool. Now heading back into the main part of High Street and passing by the famed hotel Shangri-La. It is known to be one of the best hotels anywhere in Metro Manila. I hear that it's quite beautiful inside, so please leave a comment if you would like a tour. I'll be happy to offer one in another video. Right across this ritzy hotel is the Wolfgang's Steakhouse for those who enjoy the classier meals with money to spend. Right next door to that is the much more reasonably priced Elephant Grounds, which you might have seen in my previous video. If you haven't, I strongly recommend you check it out, then visit the restaurant and tell them that I sent you. On the opposite side from that is another one of my personal favorites, the Broadside German restaurant in Beer Hall. So far, I have not seen a place quite like it in all of Metro Manila. With such awesome beer options to go along with a hearty meal, I was only able to find in here. I enjoyed one of the best food experiences here a while back and came back again with a friend for some beers, but I'm certain to visit again in the near future. Let me know if you want to grab a drink with me here sometime. Next up is the Maisan Japanese restaurant, which offers unlimited rice and side dishes to their katsu sets. Definitely worth a try if you're into Japanese food. Continuing the walk back up High Street and crossing 5th Avenue, we see the Central Square Mall with the prominent mural of the famous Shake Shack burger chain which opened up here just a few months before the pandemic hit. After the initial boom this place had, you won't find nearly as many people visiting this restaurant, but that is in part because to be honest, their burgers are a bit overrated, especially when compared to the much better options that can be found nearby. Apparently, Hanley's Toy Stores must be a big deal here because there are two locations in this one mall, one of which you can see here. I'm not going to spend as much time in this mall because I already made so many videos here, including showing the Rustan supermarket located in the basement, which is the place where I do most of my food shopping. I just wanted to give a small overview without dragging this video longer than I already have. As always, if you would like some more detailed overview of anything in this video or anything you feel that I missed out, then please mention that in the comment section and I will be happy to revisit any of these places here. I do want to point out the super dry store. Although the items here can be kinda pricey, I have to say that you really get what you pay for in this case, considering the quality and style. Going up to the third floor is where you can find the movie theater, which also fell victim to the pandemic and is now close to the public. And with that, let's go back down and out to High Street again. Passing by the Fireside, which is an American and European style grill house, is a really popular place. The Salad Stop though is a place that I would gravitate to more than most since Chris and I really try to choose healthier options when we eat out. The Coconut Club with the friends and family is a local bar that serves finger food and the restaurant has a great selection of authentic Filipino food. Uma is the main event inside a small Japanese food court for even more options. 
St. Louis is an American themed cafe which has an impressive selection of ice cream and other treats. Prepare to have a sweet and relaxing time here. The Mango Tree is a Thai restaurant that has a commanding presence on High Street and the corner of 7th Avenue. I love Thai food more than most and it's a toss up for me as to whether I prefer curry here or at a nice Indian restaurant. The Tsuta Japanese Ramen restaurant is a place that I can't really recommend due to their overall low reviews that I looked up. So we'll skip this one. Right next door however is an apparently not so single origin. <laughs> well, jokes aside, I'm glad that this restaurant has locations all over. I struggle to find a single item that I wouldn't want to try. I dare anyone to really study it and not get hungry looking at it. Grisostomo is a Filipino restaurant that is inspired by the writings of Dr. Jose Rizal and pays tribute to the cultures that influence the national cuisine with a touch of Spanish, American, Japanese and Chinese flavors. These are the kinds of foods that Filipinos would eat at around the turn of the 20th century. If you want to experience history and culture through food, this is the place to be. The wholesome table is sadly temporarily closed, so we will skip down to Nan Batne of Tokyo. What drew me here, besides the great food and atmosphere, is their all-day happy hour of two local beers for 100 pesos. You just can't get that kind of a deal anywhere else around here. But yes, the food is not only great, but offers a good value as well. Lorenzo's Way is another place for Filipino and Spanish food that is delicious and served in large portions if you don't mind paying a little extra for it. Sariwon is one of the best rated restaurants in this video and is known for great quality Korean barbecue, but that also comes at a price. The Boro is a restaurant that hits close to home for me as they serve New York style comfort food at very reasonable prices. Before the pandemic, they even had weekly movie screenings on a projector which added a lot to the fun atmosphere this place offers with exceptionally friendly staff. I definitely recommend this place a lot, so come in and show them some love. To complete this tour, we have the Emperor's Dining Palace, which is an elegant Chinese restaurant where you can dine in in style and order fish directly from their fish tank, so you know it's fresh. This ambience and freshness comes at a cost, however, so prepare your big spender mode if you plan to come in here. If you do eat here, though, you are sure to have the best Chinese food available anywhere around. I hope you enjoyed this first part of the tour around High Street. This was only the first half of the showcase that I've been working on and it's already turned out to be one of the biggest projects that I've put together so far. There will be another similar style video of the other half of Bonifacio High Street going through Serendra and all the way up to Market Market. So again, if you'd like a more detailed view of anything you saw here, please leave a request in the comment section. Also do hit the like button and leave some feedback to let me know your thoughts about what you just watched as I spend a lot of time on researching and putting all of this together. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and check the bell icon to make sure you will get notified about my upcoming videos, such as the second part of this journey through High Street. Always take care of yourselves and each other, and look forward to more fun and exciting videos coming at you from the Time Lapse Traveler. <laughs>